Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Anything But Hold'em. We are here tonight playing a Tyson's five-card PLO game. We were going to play a Turbo Triple Stud, but it was sadly canceled. We are going to play one of those at some point. Um, they are kind of bizarre and a lot of fun. So, but for the time being, I'll just get rid of that off of the title. PLO. We are on a three minute delay, as is usual. We have just turned a set of nines in our five card PLO. So we are happy campers. This is one of the Astronomer free rolls, of course. Uh, well, not of course, but it's one of the Astronomer free rolls. Um, I think we're still feeling really super good with our set of nines here. Um, I have a feeling he might have been drawing. Yeah, well, I think we're calling all the time here. Wow, set of queens versus set of nines. That's, that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. It's good hand, though. I mean, you know, can't do much about that. Um... Was doing great before I started a stream. Then, of course, I jump on stream and I lose the first hand big like that. But, I mean, what are you going to do? Set of queens over set of nines. I got flush draws happening here, so I'm still fairly happy with the hand. Um, I obviously haven't actually improved here, but. The flush draw gives me a lot of draw possibilities, and I bet preflop so I can um, represent a hand credibly. Um, so as I was saying, this is one of the Astronomer free rolls. Uh, this is the Tyson five-card PLO uh, game. It's the first time we've played PLO on the stream, or five-card PLO, well, or PLO on the stream. It's the first time we've played uh, the Omaha High variant of any kind uh, on the stream, as far as I know. Um, I know I've played both, I know I've played PLO 8, five-card PLO 8, and Kershaval High-Low, but I'm pretty sure I haven't played the pure high variants of either of any of those. Um, so I believe this is the first time that I've played any of these straight high Omaha or Omaha-like variants uh, on the stream. Um, so it'll be interesting. Uh, Omaha high is not my best game. Um, the, the odds just make my brain bleed after a couple of seconds of thinking about them with the, with the hands. And when you make it five card... Uh, PLO, well, the brain bleed just happens all that much, uh, all that much quicker for me in these cases. So, yeah, it's it's one of those cases where I'm not really necessarily uh, expecting much. Um, I have to say, when I got into this tournament, uh, we're obviously coming in. Um, I got queens and fives here. I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna throw in a pot bet just because I've got a good hand, he's got a small stack, and yeah, he might, yeah, he's just th thinking that I'm, the queens are a strong hand there, so I'm, I'm going to get him. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I wasn't really sure how it was going to go uh, when I got into this, and my first hand, I got dealt ace, king, king, x, x, and ended up still Stacking off against two other people and taking down a triple up pot to go from 1,500 chips to 4,600 chips, which is a really good way to start one of these uh, one of these games. Um, so after that, I've been pretty much coasting. I was up to about 6,500 at one point, and just as we came on stream, I I went down again. Um, I'm still pretty happy with where we are. We're a long ways from the end. Um, it's, uh, it's an astronomer free roll, so there's a lot of things that can happen between now and then. There's 400, there were 1,329 that started, there's 395 left now. Um, we're sitting 133rd at the moment. There's 72 entries being given out, um, in this one. One of the things that I've had a little bit of a beef on, well, not really a beef, but just a question mark about, um, 
recently is how the heck they work out the number of tickets that they give away in each one of these uh, free wills. Because it doesn't seem to be based on the number of people entered anymore. There are there are tournaments that I've seen with 1,329 people in them that have 48 tickets, and this one has 72. So I don't know why um, there there's a difference. Uh, what do we got? We flopped a gut shot straight draw here. We bet in. We've been betting a lot uh, recently. Santa's a pretty strong player as well. Um, We've obviously got the queen. The ace, Santa could very easily be on an ace, so I don't think we want to get super aggressive with our queen at this point. The gut shot straight isn't a horrible thing to have. We obviously haven't hit it here. Um, it might be worth betting the queen and the gut shot straight on the flop and see what happens, um, especially since we let out pre-flop, but... Um, that's probably the safer way to do it. As it turns out, he would have folded the flop. Uh, we essentially let him try to draw out for free to beat us, um, and I don't necessarily think that's going to be a good strategy most of the time. Uh, obviously, we're pretty strong here, so I think we're actually going to repot over top of him um, just because we like our hand pre-flop right now, and we like our hand even more now. Even though the spades came out and we can't be thrilled about the spades, there's no reason to think that, you know, he's here on spades, right? So I think we're going to play our trip kings like we've got top set, and there's nothing else to worry about in this in this hand, frankly. Um, now, obviously, in a five-card game, it's much easier for him to have a couple of spades randomly in his hand. That said, if he had the ace of spades, he'd have called already. I'm thinking if he had any sort of spade, he'd, he'd have called already at this point, if he had any sort of uh, double spade hand. Um, so yeah, I honestly don't see him having, having the, having the spades there that, uh, having a spade, the, the spades on the flop actually kind of, kind of killed me in a way, killed my action because, um, you know, if there's not spades there, he might be playing back with, um, you know, with a six or with a king six or with a king of, uh, of any kind. Um, and I want that sort of action. Um, but with all the spades out there, those hands are not really going to continue when I'm when I'm betting half pot out like that. Tyler, how's this going? Good to see you here, buddy. Good to see you. Welcome to Anything But Hold'em. Tonight we are playing a weekly round to satellite. This is a um, free roll satellite that they play on stars. Uh, all sorts of different mixed games, so it's a great way to get in and learn new mixed games. Uh, the ticket you win gets you into a $2,000 guaranteed prize pool, uh, ticket-only free roll entry um, that you can play on the weekends that uh, is quite uh, quite good value, actually, and you can uh, make some pretty good money on it. I was in a No Limit Deuce to Seven Single draw this weekend and min cashed in that for a buck ten in free dollars. So free dollars are always good. If you haven't already done so, click the follow button down below the uh, channel, the the channel video, please. Uh, we are a machine that runs on follow love, and so every click of that button is. Another wonderful uh, quarter into this anything but hold them arcade machine. Right, so we've got the royal flush draw with the nut straight at the moment. And our friend's betting into us. So I think we're going to play this somewhat aggressively. Um... And I suppose at this point, what we need to do is start a half pot bet and see if he wants to put a stack in, which he apparently does. Now, there's obviously no hand that beats us on this board that I can see. And just other king tens that um, tie with us. So, yeah, we're just going to split this.
Lots of diamonds in this hand. It's worth uh, coming in for a coming in for a limp. See what uh, Santa likes to do. Santa's giving me a taste of my own medicine from what uh, I did when he came in under the gun last time. I don't think we need to respond to that really. I think we can just fold it out. In that case, we weren't hugely strong. All those diamonds doesn't make for a great flush draw. It obviously you're taking taking hands away from or cards away from what can come out on the flop for you. Just gonna fold this, let uh, Santa take the take the free chips on that one. This is a hand I think is probably worth getting involved in, so I think I'm probably going to throw a pot bet out there with this one. I think I'm sort of at the point now with my strategy, the blind levels, and my stack where if I'm coming in the pot, if I'm opening the pot, I'm going to be potting the pot. Potting the pot. Potting the pot pot. It's a pretty insane game, I think, with the with the fifth card in here. I mean, PLO itself is a pretty a insane, gambly, swingy, swingy game. Um, you add a fifth card to that gambly swinginess, and it's just a pretty insane sort of pretty insane sort of game. Anything can can kind of happen, as we've already seen happen in this uh, in this one. So we flop two pair. Which on a board like that is not the nicest thing because Jack Queen could easily be there, and somebody has pot bet into us. Um, that could easily be a Jack Queen. That could also easily be a flush draw, a heart draw. Um, what else could that be? What else could that be? A flush draw. King nine. King nine is probably doing that as well. Oh well, what the hell? It's only a free roll. That's probably not the best uh, poker strategy in the world. Oh well, what the hell? It's only a free roll. But uh, you know, let's put curl baby. Let's make curl baby uh, d decide if they want to play for their stack or not. Flush draw, pair of nines, and ended up getting into the straight. So that's cool. I mean, it's gonna happen. People are gonna draw it on you. People are going to draw out on you. Nothing we can do about situations like that. Nothing at all. Uh, there's some straight connection possibilities with the 7, 9, 10 there and the 10 king, 9, 10 king, uh, but I really don't think there's enough strength there for me to get in under the gun right now. This is an interesting looking hand. Diamonds. Could be a full house. Could be straights out there as well. Whole bunch of possibilities here. If I if I had a straight, I wouldn't be feeling very happy at this point, for sure. 
Doesn't matter what straight I've got unless it's the ten or the ten. No, even that I was gonna say the ten jack of uh, diamonds, but even that doesn't uh, really give me. Uh, I mean, that obviously gives me the the flush, but it's not the, the the best flush either. There's the queen and the ace above me. Pretty amazing to see the uh, sort of lowest possible monster be the one that actually took it down there. Uh, the nine to king straight was kind of the worst possible hand we were talking about in that range of range of hands that were in that going in, and that's the one that ended up taking it down. So that's kind of kind of an interesting note to make. I don't know if that's indicative of the play that we should necessarily expect from these people all the time, but that's certainly an interesting note to make. Again, there's lots of connections there, but I suppose with the odds there, I probably should have come through, and especially now that I see the flop, of course, but that's being results-oriented, which you never want to do. Yes, eights full of sevens would have been very nice in this pot, and I think I probably would have won, most likely. Sigh. That's what happens when you're a nip bitch, folks. To quote our good friend, Mr. Jason, Mr. Jason Somerville. Those chips could have been ours. Can I not be such a net bitch on this one? Uh, we flopped a heart draw, which is cool. A pair of fives, which is cool. Got curl baby betting a pot into us, which I think we're probably going to fold to. PLO players out there are probably screaming, "No, no, you can't fold the flush draw there!" But I, it's not a, it's not the, it's it's the second flush draw. So even if it comes in, do I, do I think I'm good? Always, I don't know. With the way that curl baby's betting. Certainly some sort of an ace-high flush draw is not out of the question, I wouldn't think. Ace-king club. Ace-2-3 for bottom straight possibilities. I think playing this pot's not a terrible idea. I think we're going to pot this, make Santa play for their life on this flop. Um, he's going to make us play essentially for our life, and I think that given that we made that move, we don't have a lot of choice but to do that. So we will call and see what happens with our 625 chips. He swapped a set of sevens. We're in bad shape. We are in very bad shape. I don't think that was necessarily the wrong move for us. I think we just ended up running into a monster hand. Uh, Jack, King, Queen, 3-4. Lots of flush and straight possibilities. I don't really think that given our, our limited chips at this point, we can afford to, to fold that hand. Uh, Santa's trying to knock us out, so hopefully Santa is happy to call us weak. Ooh. Ooh. That, uh, as they say in the business, that's a fairly good flop for my hand. Doesn't really matter what variant of poker you play. If you've got two of those green clubby shaped things in your hand and three of those clubby shaped things come out on the flop, it's a pretty good day. 
I should say it doesn't matter what variant of poker you play because it's not going to be a very good day if you're playing low ball poker. But we ain't playing any low ball poker in this Tyson's five card PLO. We're playing a strictly Omaha high with the extra fifth card, uh, which just adds oodles and oodles and oodles of of permutations to the to the odds and possibilities, and it makes my brain bleed if I try to actually work out any of the numbers. So I don't even really bother to try to work out any of the numbers. I just I just kind of play by feel, and as you can see, it doesn't always suit me terribly well. Um, just check through here with the uh, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's obviously a great hand to draw into. We haven't drawn into it terribly well at this point. We've just hit a pair of 7s, with, which gives us 7s and 3s. We're terribly thrilled with that. We're probably wanting to see a showdown at this point. Um, yeah, because even the jack isn't doing anything for us. We've got the 7, 8, 9, uh, but we've got, no, we, we've got no way to make our third card for the straight. So I think we're probably check calling here. Um, in all cases, um, and we're losing to his uh, flush. I think this is a, pot, a spot where we're potting with our kings um, and putting the rest of our stack in if we can pre-flop. We might back out on, the flop, on a flop that has an ace on it, which of course this one does. Um, however, we have also got a gut shot to go with this, so I think we've got no choice but to put the rest of our chips in this pot. Wow, and that's it, we're done. Well, it's a, it's a quick game when you're playing uh, pot limit stuff like this, and especially in a, in a swingy game like, like, um, five card pot limit Omaha. Um... So that's it. We finished in 184th, I think it was, or 196th or something. Either way, we were out of the cash, uh, but that's cool. Um, so this was the first example of any high, straight high Omaha variant that we played on anything but hold them here. Uh, Going to do some more. I want to find... Uh, a Kershavel high to play, and I certainly want to find a uh, regular PLO uh, tournament to play. Um, I'm just having a quick look at the lobby of Poker Stars at the moment to see if there's anything starting or on now that we could play. Well, that one's 18 minutes away. Well, I've been on this one for 20 minutes or so. I think I'm actually just going to call this a stream. Um, it's been kind of a short one, but that sometimes happens when you're playing at tournament poker. There's nothing really huge uh, that I can see in the... Poker Stars lineup coming up. Um, there's a couple of ones later in the evening, so I might jump on uh, and play one in an hour or so again. But otherwise, thank you very much for coming by and joining me at Anything But Hold'em. Um, that's what we do here. We play Anything But Hold'em. So watch your Twitter feed for the next time we're playing, and I'll see you then. Later.